In this video, we're talking the Chiefs' decision to move Clyde Edwards-Alaire off the roster less than a week before their opening game. Will Samaje Pirine be ready? We're talking the full injury report, plus some news on newly acquired defensive end Cam Thomas. Welcome back to All Chiefs Up. We're back with another podcast for that ass. Before we get rolling, do your boys a favor, hit the like button for us. Also hit that subscribe button. Help us get to 50,000 subscribers before the Super Bowl. Mike, let's break it down. You're listening to All Chiefed Up. All right, gather around because we got to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs and their latest roster shenanigans. Over the weekend, they made a few moves that had y'all scratching your heads like you just found out Miseris Johnson, your Sunday school teacher, is now making a million dollars a year selling feet pics on OnlyFans. Struggling with it. By the way, Eric Scott did clear waivers, so it's still possible Veach decides to bring him back. The signing that didn't suck and had almost everyone in the red and gold's flagpole standing at full mast was veteran running back Samaje Pirine. And let me tell you, that is suddenly a huge deal. So here's the scoop. The Chiefs put Clyde Edwards-Alaire on the reserve slash non-football illness list on Sunday, and it was announced to the public on Monday. Now, that's a fancy way of saying Clyde's dealing with some serious stuff. We will not degrade someone going through something as serious as PTSD because he took a roster spot or we think he was overdrafted and now he's a bust. We wish him the best in recovery and hopefully now he has the time to get it under control. The poor guy's going to be sidelined for at least the first four games of the season. Clyde needs to take all the time he can to get his life together, and nobody should be hating on him for that choice. Now, enter Samaje Pirine, who just signed with the team a few short days ago. Talk about walking headfirst into the fire. The dude didn't even get to have a burnt in yet, and he's already facing off against an old rival in Baltimore. He'll be rolling out as RB3 with Pacheco and Carson Still right when the season kicks off on Thursday. And let's be real, if you're going to suit up for the Chiefs, you better come ready to play like you're competing with your fat aunt Tanya for the last slice of pizza at the Pizza Ranch Buffet. Yeah, Samaje um, is the newest member. Um, he, uh, we, we all know what he did to us when he was at Cincinnati with that screenplay. And, uh, but uh, Samaje has done this over, uh, over his career where he's, a, he's been a, a phenomenal third down back. Um, but he's also a good runner. Um, uh, and I, I think uh, that you know that he's he's really a good person. I mean, that word has traveled around the National Football League and what kind of guy he is, and locker room guy and so on. So uh, we welcome that. As of Sunday, Coach Reed confirmed that P. Ryan is good for week one. I've just got to see with, with P. Ryan on, on where he's at and picking everything up and um, I'm not going to put him in a bad position, obviously, but I, I think he's going to be fine. He's been in here cranking away, so we'll, we'll see how everything how everything goes. But here's the million-dollar question. How much is he actually going to play? Former Chiefs right tackle Mitchell Schwartz chimed in on X, saying that Pirine's row as a third down slash passing back gives him a shot at getting some serious action early on. The team's protection prep is a week-to-week process, so who knows if they'll figure it out in time for the big game. Let's see what Matt Nagy has to say about it. Yeah, again, we're, we're learning that ourselves right now too, Adam. I think we're, we're learning that as we get through this. How much can he handle? Um, what's too much? What's not enough? There's a balance, but certainly one thing that, that I've taken from being with him these short amount of days is that super smart, um, he's a true pro. He gets it. So, I, you know, we just got to balance how much. Thursday night is banner night, and we don't want a repeat of last year's opening game. Now, if there's one thing Pirine knows, it's how to navigate the Ravens' defense. He's faced them seven times before. He's like an old friend of John Hardball's at this point. He's got 29 carries for 138 yards and a touchdown, plus eight catches for 82 yards. And get this, he even has three career tackles against the Ravens on special teams. So, yeah, there's that. If you ask us, Pirine's going to be fine with whatever they want him to do. The Chiefs also brought in new defensive end Cameron Thomas, who had his own little adventure. He thought he was sticking around Arizona after a solid training camp, but boom, out of nowhere, he gets traded to the world freaking champs. It's like being at the bar mitzvah and your buddy suddenly shows up and says, hey, we're going to Vegas. And you're like, hell yeah, this is awesome. Thomas had a rough time with a hamstring injury that kept him from showing off his skills during the pre-draft process. It's like trying to impress the world in a breakdancing competition, but instead, you just look like this. But the good news for him is that he's got Colin, the Chiefs defensive line coach, who's been in his corner since day one. It's like Muhammad Ali teaching you how to throw a jab. 
Thomas feels like he's finally in the right place with Steve Spagnuolo's 4-3 scheme. He spent time with the Cardinals trying to fit into a 3-4 outside linebacker role, which is more awkward than your mom busting in on you in the bathroom because you've been in the shower a few extra minutes trying to scratch that devil's itch, you feel me? Now he's back to a three-point stance, and he's learning to lock the damn door. But yeah, the Chiefs are shuffling their lineup like a deck of cards, and we're all just hoping for a royal flush come Thursday night. So buckle up. The Chiefs are gearing up for their first game of the season against the Ravens on Thursday. They kicked off practice on Sunday, September 1st, but the real drama unfolded on Monday when the injury report dropped like a hot mixtape. Chiefs coach Andy Reid, a man who looks like he's got a dang good secret stash of barbecue sauce in his office, stepped up to the mic to fill us in on the injury situation. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard a man speak about injuries with the enthusiasm of Bill Belichick finding out he has an uncurable case of the herp, but Reed sure knows how to keep the media on the edge of their seats. He mostly reiterated what we already knew. But here's the kicker. Marquise Hollywood Brown, yeah, the guy with a name that sounds like he should be starring in a rom-com instead of catching passes from Patrick Mahomes, was the only player not participating in practice on Monday. The poor guy's dealing with a sternoclavicular joint dislocation. I mean, I can't even say that without sounding like I'm trying to pronounce a fancy French dish. It's the second practice in a row that he's missed, but everyone already knew he wasn't going to be back for week one. Reed basically gave us the heads up last Friday that Brown was likely out for this game. This guy went down on the very first play of week one of the preseason. Talk about a dramatic entrance. It's like showing up to a party, tripping over your own feet, and spilling punch all over the girl you hope to talk to for the first time. Now, the chances of him being ready for game two versus the Bengals? That's about a 50-50 split, but it feels promising. As for the rest of the team, everyone else is in the mix. The rest of the players showed up to practice, including cornerbacks Josh Williams and Nazi Johnson. These guys were dealing with some hamstring issues, which is just code for, I'm tired of the preseason. So, as the clock ticks closer to kickoff, let's hope for no setbacks and Jalen Watson to evolve into Richard Sherman circa 2013. So a lot going on around Chiefs Kingdom going into this Thursday night game to kick the season off, Mike. But hopefully we'll get settled in here soon and just ride through this season to a three-peat, baby. So Clyde's been struggling with PTSD. He's been struggling with a sickness, Steve. What do you think about the Chiefs waiting this long to actually put him on the non-football injury list? I think it makes perfect sense, man. They were probably just giving him the benefit of the doubt. They thought maybe he could get through whatever he's going through and be there to kick the season off on Thursday night. They would like to have the experience in the backfield, but this is going to open up an opportunity for someone like Carson Steele to get out there on the world stage in front of freaking everybody on Thursday night yep. and show people what he can do, man. Yeah, I think Carson Steele's going to do a good job. I really do. But I also think he's going to have some growing pains. He's playing in front of America. He's playing in front of everybody. All eyes are on him. First few snaps in the NFL. The dude come from Ball State. He goes to UCLA. Now he's with the world back-to-back -back champions going for a three-peat. It's going to be rough. Samaje P. Ryan, he doesn't know a lot of the plays just yet. Samaje P. Ryan's going to have to go out there and he's going to have to do what he can, contribute any way he's asked to contribute, and hope that he just relies on all of his experience against the Baltimore Ravens to know what to expect from the Baltimore Ravens. That's about all he can do. Another new kid on the block, Cam Thomas. He's probably going to get some playing time in the season opener just because Felix hasn't exactly got to where they would like him to be. Right. How do you think Cam Thomas is going to do in his season debut for the Chiefs? Right. I think he's going to get to play a lot. I do think Felix is going to get to go out there and show what he can do. I don't think they've given up on him. He's going to get some snaps. He's going to get a lot of snaps. Him, Mike Dan, and George Karloftis, they're going to get a chance to eat a little bit because Lamar Jackson is going to have everybody running all over the yard, and they're going to have to rotate. You know how that always is. They're going to get a little tired. They're going to rotate. Cam Thomas is going to get to play. I think he's going to do well. It was just said today that he's shadowing Joe Cullen around everywhere in the facilities. He's trying to absorb as much as he can. I think he's going to go out there. He's going to work hard. He's going to get after the quarterback, Steve. And I think our pass rush is going to be fine. Containing him with linebackers, containing him with defensive ends, maybe defensive tackles here and there, some spies, whatever you have to do, you got to keep Lamar Jackson in the pocket. And look, if they want to get out and run a little bit, let them run. Nick Bolton's waiting for King Henry. Sticking with the defense, man, it looks like a couple of the cornerbacks are going through some hammy injuries, that being Joshua Williams and Nazi Johnson. That means Jalen Watson might get a good look at the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night, Mike. How do you think that's going to play out for them, and do you think that sets Josh Williams back from maybe taking that cornerback two role? Yeah, it depends. Jalen Watson's missed a lot of time, too, because of his previous injuries. Williams, Nazi, they've all had some hammy injuries. Look, the Chiefs have dropped half of the back end of their corner room, so it's going to depend on guys like maybe Chamari Connor. Trent McDuffie's going to have to be a dog and follow everybody. 
If Watson gets called, if Johnson gets called, if Williams gets called, somebody's going to have to step up and do the Lord's work out there for the Chiefs. But I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think we've got enough in the DB room between safeties and corners and even linebackers that can cover that we're going to be fine. And I do believe Josh Williams, when it's all said and done, is going to step up and take that CB2 job. And so this is where we pass it off to you. Get in the comments. Let us know how you think those new running backs are going to do against a tough defense in Baltimore on Thursday night. Also, how do you think the corners are going to do? Are they going to be able to keep Lamar Jackson from setting a personal best 212 yards passing? And if you would like some more in-depth analysis or just come by and talk to us and ACU crew, we will be doing our live stream tomorrow night. It's the first tailgate of the season. So make sure to come over and check that out. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for liking, subscribing, clicking that bell. We'll catch you next time. Go Chiefs.